So, just got done watching Ghost in the Shell. I'm of two minds about that movie. We're going to talk a lot about it after I get some sleep, because it's 1.30 in the morning. On my way into work tomorrow, we'll have a whole conversation. Until then, cue the music. Thank you once again for watching Generally Nerdy. Uh, even though we're after the music, we're going to do a couple formalities. GenerallyNerdy.net is the website. Go there and you can find all the things. And today we're talking Ghost in the Shell. It was good. Like, all right, let's 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 knock a couple of things out first. Spoiler alert, because I watched the whole movie, so I'm going to talk about the whole movie. If you've seen the anime or read the manga, I'm not going to ruin much of anything except for the parts that are different. <clears throat> um, that being said, if you haven't seen the anime, I've never read the manga, so I only know what I've read about the manga, and basically the original anime is just a motion version of the manga. So... What in the hell is that noise? Sorry, there's construction while I'm driving. So, pardon me while I talk over the noise as I'm stopped at a red light. Anyway, uh, so the original anime I have seen a few times. And it's it's really great. There's... It it's, goes back to the, the discussion that we've had before about um, when does artificial intelligence begin? Uh, does a machine being self-aware possess a soul? Um, all of these wonderful things. Uh, Star Wars deals with it with the droids and, and so many different science fiction stories deal with that very question. So, this is another one of those stories that deals with that question. Now, the anime deals with it one way. Uh, the, so, the main character, Major, is a cyborg. She is... She has artificial intelligence, there's nothing human about her, and she's haunted by dreams of her creation. Uh, the ghost in question in the anime is an AI that comes into being of its own volition. So, it's a play on uh, an old phrase called the ghost of the machine that uh, programmers from forever ago, when, when you program a computer, it doesn't always stay exactly how you programmed it. Sometimes things happen. It becomes eccentric. Um, and it, 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 you know, certain bits of code delete, certain bits of code replicate, and, and it, it gets quirky, I guess is a good way to say it. So, That's kind of that. I, I feel like I don't know Japanese. I've never tried to look into the proper translation of the title of the anime, but I feel like either it's a play on that Ghost in the Machine, or uh, it was improperly translated, um, and it should have been Ghost in the Machine. Either way, that's that's very much what the anime is about. It's about this AI that has no body hunting down this new AI, Major, that does have a body but was actually created by people um, and him trying to court her. And then at the end of the at the end of the anime, they merge intelligences into one single unit. 
and they get put into the body of a small girl for some reason. Um, and that's basically the end of the movie. It's, it's rather unsatisfying once you get to the end because it's, it feels like it's kind of the middle of the story. Uh, and if you've read Neuromancer, like it's, it's got definite shades of Neuromancer by William Gibson. Um, so apparently everybody borrows liberally, liberally from Gibson, even the Wachowskis, but that's a whole nother conversation. Uh, so the movie doesn't deal, does, that's not the ghost in which they're talking about. In the movie, Major starts out human. She is a, oh, and, and also addressing the issue everyone had with Scarlett Johansson being a Japanese character, um, and they never say Japan. Uh, it, it's set in a future where there's no country names. There's just district names. So I feel like the need to address... And, like, Major was drawn in such a way that she's relatively culturally ambiguous. Uh, and I feel like that was totally on purpose. Um, but because it was an anime everyone just assumed that everyone in the anime was supposed to be Japanese. Uh, again, they never say a country name, so I feel like that assumption is solely on the people making it and not implied by the animator or the author. Uh, but in the movie, they still never say country names, ever. Um, and they only refer to districts, and they refer to the districts differently in the movie. It feels like the districts are um, different sections of a country, because they do refer to this country. Um, it, it, the, there is a slight implication that it's probably Japan, because Major has a line of dialogue where she says, where she's talking about what she remembers as her parents coming to this country, bringing her to this country and dying on the boat that they came over on. And and it was a terrorist act, and that's why she fights terrorists, because that's what she remembers of her life before becoming a cyborg. And, and in this instance, the cyborg is human brain, completely uh, automated body. So, uh, again, there's, there's a pretty big difference between that and an artificial intelli artificially intelligent cyborg created by people. Um, so yeah, they do address the fact that she is not Japanese in a land where there's a higher percentage of Japanese. Because not everyone's Japanese in this uh, movie either. There's, there's a lot of ambiguously cultural faces. There's, there's a heavy amount of Japanese faces. Um, but there's no, there's no definitive, we are in Japan moment. So, again, I, I just feel like the people that were so upset about that are, are placing too much emphasis on the change. And, yeah, it's a little weird. Before you see the movie, it's like, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And then you see the movie, and you're like, oh, okay, I guess that it makes sense. Uh, but it's really just a, an excuse to get Scarlett Johansson on screen, is all, all they're doing. They're justifying her uh, Anglo-Saxon appearance in this predominantly Japanese-appearing world. But it's a non-issue, moving on. So... The ghost in this movie, as opposed to the anime, is major. Uh, because she was human at one point, they keep referring to her soul, her ghost, her spirit. And it's really cheesy that they try to shoehorn that word ghost and shell in as much as possible in the dialogue. Uh, your ghost survived in your shell, you're one of a kind, blah 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 blah. They say that literally half a dozen times in the span of about 20, 30 minutes. So it, the vocabulary gets a little annoying. And the other thing that's super annoying about this, and we're going to talk about this in more depth in just a minute, but like her posture 
is super awkward and like there's times where she's acting two-dimensional like she has no emotion and then there's times where she seems to be acting full-on and that she's you know a fully developed character but again we'll get to that in a minute um, but yeah so instead of the ghost being the big bad instead of the ghost being this artificial intelligence that created itself uh, the ghost is her and then the big bad, at least what they're leading you to assume through the first two acts approximately, uh, by the end of the second act you're going, oh, so that dude's not the bad guy necessarily, even though he is the one killing people, he is another ghost in a shell, because that's apparently how they refer to their brain transplants into cyborgs. Um, I honestly forget his name right now. It's, it's I, I'm pretty sure it's the same name as the dude, the big bad in the anime. I just am, uh, I have no notes to reference, so my apologies. Uh, and also, Baitu starts off a lot more human and then becomes more progressively more cyborg than versus the anime, where he's basically he is a cyborg just like Major. Um, but that's kind of a side note. There's no real... It's, it adds a little bit of depth because they reference a lot of um, augmentation stuff where people augment themselves uh, cybernetically in order to become... To, to live longer, to have better eyesight, so on and so forth. So that's, that's the only thing that that change does is kind of accents that part of the story. Um, but, so yeah, the big bad is really just an earlier trial in the project that Major is a part of, and he's hunting down all of the, the scientists who were a part of that project and killing them. So there's a lot of scenes that are homage scenes, I'm calling them. They, they're referencing the anime. There's, there's the, a scene where they chase down a couple of guys in a, uh, in a dumpster, in a dump truck. And then they, they capture one of the guys in the dump truck and they find out that his memory's been wiped and re-implanted with these artificial uh, memories. Just like in the anime, I mean, the scene is probably half as long, or the, the, the chase scene and then the fight between Major and the, the dumpster, or the dump truck driver probably about half as long as in the anime, but it still happens. Um, her creation at the beginning slightly changed, but still basically the same, because uh, you're not gonna get Scarlett Johansson naked on screen, uh, but also they have to show the, them implanting the brain into her body, because that wasn't in the anime. Um, yeah, there's, there's a few of those moments. They, they, the one that really annoyed me though, because most of them are like, oh, that's really cool. They basically just recreated that scene on screen with live action. There's one of those scenes though that's like, I mean, the original is so awesome. The shot is so cool because they play with the lighting so much. It's when Major wakes up in her apartment and uh, the only light in the room is her opening the window. <clears throat> so the whole scene is played in silhouette. Uh, the homage scene in this live-action movie is completely lit so we can see Scarlet the whole time. There's no silhouette effect at all. Um, and that just kind of bugged me because because lighting is such a cool thing to play with, especially when it's a, such a visually stunning movie. And the live-action movie is no less visually stunning than the anime. Uh, potentially more so because of its updated uh, demeanor. So... That aside, visually, this movie's beautiful and phenomenal. And I really dig they stuck in those scenes that are homages to the anime. Uh, then we eventually find out that the actual Big Bad is, of course, a government entity who is trying to uh, use Major as a weapon. And it's... Ah, it gets really sticky in the third act 
this general guy who <clears throat> who actually no he's not a general he works for Hong Hanaka um, Robotics I believe is the name of the company and he's like the military ha half of that company and so he's like major works for the government so majors commanding officer reports to a general who has a contract with Hanaka Robotics or Honka Honka Robotics I think it might be Honka I'm sorry anyway so this guy thinks he's got all this power and he kills the final doctor that the other that the other big bad didn't get to yet uh, the one that answered all of Major's questions, and because she answered all of Major que Major's questions, this robotics dude kills her, and blames it on Major because Major's on the lamb, and so it's this whole thing. And then Major's team gets burned, and that's a, a, a pretty cool montage of scenes where all of the the team are defending themselves, uh, by two and all that. Um, but then Major finds out because the doctor who answers all of her questions gives her her original memories she finds out that she was kidnapped by the government uh, because she was a runaway and she was a series she was the last in a series number 99 uh, so she was the first success so they killed or they thought they killed at least 98 when they probably in fact only killed 97 because we have the the previous ghost in the shell that was uh, hunting her uh, hunting all the doctors rather and and again visually stunning um michael pitt i believe is the actor who plays him uh and it's so even even auditory with him is so well executed like you believe he is a deteriorating artificial intelligence or a deteriorating uh, artificial physicality at the very least um but yeah so i guess that's kind of a segue into the issues that i had with the movie aside from that one homage scene um all of my issues with this movie had to do with Scarlett Johansson. Now, generally speaking, I dig Scarlett Johansson. There's nothing wrong with her. Uh, she's a moderately good actor. Uh, she's really pretty. So, like, I really don't have anything against Scarlett. I, th I feel like she does very well in action movies, as we've seen from the uh, Marvel movies, the Disney Marvel movies. I just... Her physicality, we'll start there and then we'll move into her actual acting, but the physical the physical display that she puts on screen, like I understand she's naturally slightly pigeon-toed, but like she totally plays into that a little bit, so she walks very awkwardly, and it looks like the issue I have at least this far is twofold. One is her poor acting choice with the physicality, and two, the, the poor choice of the director to direct her in such a way that she decided to, as an actor, make her poor choice. So it seems like the director said, all right, so you're, you're a cyborg, you can't move fluidly like a human. You have to move awkwardly, uh, whatever that may be. You have to move awkwardly. Uh, because you're a robot and and you're not and you're you're used to a human body and so your your human mind in this robot body just never adjusted right so that's how you that's that I feel like is the direction that was given um, so her interpretation of that it just does not play there are a couple of spots where it's like oh okay so she's trying to be you know she's trying to be uncomfortable in her skin and then there's a couple of points where it's just like, what the hell is she doing? That doesn't look convincing at all. And there's more of the latter and less of the former, which is distracting in the movie. And then, like I said earlier, her the, the words, her delivery of this, the dialogue, at times is fantastic. Um, 
and again there's there's probably more points in that where you're going so she has a human brain but she still can't have emotions that doesn't make sense there's there's a there's a cognitive disconnect where it's just it's just distracting it's not a good acting choice if you're questioning why she's moving slash speaking that way and the the more aggravating part about all of that is the times when it when it works so well because there's times where she's emoting where she's acting where she's giving us a delivery um there's the, the action scenes, there's no awkward movement in the action scenes. It is like, it's like they flip a switch as soon as she starts throwing a punch and she's moving very fluidly at that point. Or when she starts running around shooting people, she's moving very, very fluidly. It's then, once the action stops, she gets into this really rigid, like, head forward, sometimes it's head down kind of posture that just I don't buy it and it's very distracting it, it very much pulls you out of the movie so that kind of gets us to the end of this and uh, I mean oh no no yeah we'll talk about the end of the movie so the end of the movie uh, like I said the end of the anime the two AIs merge and they get put into one body together so that they can be, you know, they can take over the net is kind of the implication because that was, that's the final line of dialogue. The net is vast. Um, because it was 95 and the net was the edgy way to refer to the internet. So the end of this movie is really badass. They have the, they have the, uh, the battle with the spider tank, just like in the movie. She even rips her arm off and like splits her skin, just like in the anime. So that was really cool. Uh, it was really cool. Like, I, I kind of feel like the battle in the live-action movie was a little better than the battle in the anime. Um, but then, where the anime basically stops about three to five minutes after this battle, we still have another 10 to 15 minutes uh, in the live-action movie where we're establishing that she didn't she didn't merge with the other AI guy to go into the web and and evolve was kind was the argument he kept making we can evolve beyond them beyond people um, she didn't do that because she belongs here because she is a a beacon of hope she is what people will become can become I guess um, And, and so I, I, then we get a, like, kind of a where are they now update with all of her team, and they're all working for the government again, even though they were burned in the, in the, uh, er, earlier in the movie. And, I don't know, I, I, this ending is a lot more satisfying. There's, there's a lot more solution in this ending than there was in the anime, so... And then we see her jump off a building again, like she does at the beginning of the movie, to presumably go through a window. Uh, again, a callback to the anime. So, would I recommend this movie? Yes, I really would. It's really good. Um, would I would I suggest seeing it opening weekend? Eh, probably not. You could you could skip the crowd, catch it by yourself. Uh, wait till it comes it comes out on video, so you can download it. Uh, this is definitely not a pirate it kind of movie. Give them your money. It's worth it's worth the couple bucks it, it'll take to see it, um, but probably not worth the fifteen bucks it'll take to see it in the big fancy theater opening weekend. So take with that what you will. I thank you very much for watching. Remember, you are watching generally nerdy, and if it is generally nerdy then chances are 